You are the son of a senator and a church deacon, I might add. A son of privilege, Patrick. And all I was trying to do is enjoy that privilege, Father. By running out on your tutors and causing havoc in the village. What will it take for you to realise that life is more than just you? For now, go to your room. And Patrick, you are to stay within these grounds for the next week. What? But Father... I know it's hard for you to understand, but your father, he disciplines you because he loves you, Patrick. Now, don't forget to- Say my prayers. I know, I know, I know. One of these days, I won't be treated like a child. One of these days, no one will tell me what to do. Plunder all you can, and remember, we are in need of strong, young slaves. Will someone please keep those dogs quiet? Pirates! What? Quickly, Patrick! But, Father, what's We've happening? We've got to... Oh! Father! The boy! He's getting away! Run, Patrick! Run! After him! Ah! Ah! Put him with the others! Ha-ha! No. <laughs> no! Come here! Let me go! Let me go! Uh. Where are they taking us? To Ireland. And if you know how to pray, boy, you best start now. No, 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 no. This can't be happening to me. I am the son of Senator Calpurnius. I do not belong here. I do not belong here. Huh? <sighs> Another difficult night, Bishop? Yes. Lately, I've had these dreams. About the time I was kidnapped. It's like I am living it all over again. I... I was just a boy. Where... where are we? I, I don't know. But with three days' journey between us and the sea, I'd say we were very far inland. My wife! Please, sir, if I... You have returned! I have! And my son, how is he? A few more days away. You could have asked him yourself. <gasps> I see the gods... ...have favored you, just as I implore them. Priest Cathbad. I have come to take their portion, as well as offer them thanks for such great spoils. Uh, and there's much more where that came from. You speak without permission. If I may, I am Patrick, son of Senator Calpurnius. The place you raided is my father's. Name your price. My father will pay any ransom. He is very... Wealthy! <laughs> oh, I doubt he has anything left. Oh, no. Please, I don't belong here. Then, I may just have the way out for you. Take him to the pyre. He shall make a good sacrifice for the gods. Cutbad! What? The lad's young 
and we need strong workers for the harvest. Would the gods not be just as pleased with some of the others? Mm. Fine. But don't you ever challenge my authority again. Let the boy go. Take him instead. And him. And that one. Oh, no, please, please, please. Whatever you were before, you are now a slave. And don't you ever forget that. Husband! It is time! <gasps> oh! That's your bread. And some cheese. That should last you a few days. Now, get to work! But what do I do? Look around. What do you see? Nothing. That's cause your sheep have gone grazing, you fool. Now, find and stay with them. Lord Cessnan will be at you if any of them get sick or killed by wolves. Wolves? And don't you even think of running away. You get caught and you'd wish you'd never been born. Now, get! Uh. There you are. Now, now. Stay right where you are. Wait. Where are you going? Stay. Oh. Don't! No! Don't! Come back here! I said, get back here! Get! Ah! Why me? Why is this happening to me? God, why? Why me? Why me? Why me? Don't give me that look. You're nothing but trouble. What would have happened if I hadn't gotten back up and found you? You could have ended up... Huh? What was that? No, 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 no. Help me. Please help me. Please help me. Because he is sickly and weak, you're telling us to return it to the gods. Take it out to the wilderness, and leave him there. We call on you to intercede with the gods for our son's healing. You know our customs. Getting rid of the weak keeps the clan strong. It is the way of the gods. Then maybe we need a better way. Una, my wife is upset. She's treading on dangerous ground. Keep in mind, Lord Cessnan, that I alone speak for the gods. We have got 
thoughts of trees, of rocks, of storms, of war? Is there not a God of mercy? <gasps> Even though I was the son of a church deacon, I did not really know God. I felt ashamed even to pray. But with no one to talk to, I began to approach God, with little words here and there, just asking for help for the day, then for help keeping watch over the sheep, finding food, building a shelter, for health when I was sick, comfort when I was sad, I was speaking to him about everything. And my heart was filled with trust in him. And I began to see his hand everywhere and to realize that I no longer walked alone. Lord, you are with me, before me, behind me, in me, beneath me, above me. You, you're on my right, on my left when I sit down and when I lie down. Oh Lord, you have brought me to Ireland as a slave, and it is here, in the land of my captivity, that you have set me free. Clans divided, fights over territory. Rations are more important than ever. They are. Well then, the crops were not good. But how? How is that? We've done as the gods demand. Have you? Have you really? Uh, my lord, the situation is not entirely dark. While the crops failed, the sheep flourished. We shall have enough milk, cheese, and meat for winter. And this is due to... Patrick? One of the slaves. <laughs> ah, he's been here six years now. It is because of God's help. It is him that I depend on for everything. And which of the gods is that? I am a Christian. We believe in one God. And this is the God you have served from your youth. I'm ashamed to say that I had not truly known him until I met with hardship. It's because he can bring good from the worst situations that I stand before you today. But is it not true that this god of yours died naked, flogged, and hung on a cross? <laughs> a god that suffers such humiliation at the hands of men is no god at all. It is because he has suffered humiliation that he can walk with me in mine. He sympathizes with the weak and hears our prayers. <laughs> A god that sympathizes. <laughs> then, perhaps he may sympathize with us. Would your god hear your prayer for my son? What? For six years we have begged the gods to heal our child, yet there is no change. Because the gods do not will it. That's why. Enough! You dare to silence me? And you would deny me the health of my son? Don't. Don't! God in heaven, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and in the intercession of the angels and saints, I ask that you heal this boy. I said no! Out! How dare you bring your god to this place? Out! I warn you, Sessanen, if you think you have trouble now, continue in your neglect of the gods and see how you will be judged. You, and the entire clan.
What now? We need to do away with this Christian before he further casts his spell on the rest of the clan. At the next full moon, let his god try to deliver him from me. and think of running away. You get caught, and you'd wish you'd never been born. Shit. I must go. Oh, he'll get... No. But he'll get away. And perhaps... That is not a bad thing. Let him die in the woods. I ran as fast as I could. I knew what would happen if I was caught. It took me days to get to the shore, and there, just as God had shown me, was the ship that would take me back to my parents, back to my home. has returned! Thank you, Marcus. You have changed. A long time ago, you told me the day would come when I realised that life is more than just about what I want. I remember. I believe God is asking something of me. I believe God is calling me to serve him as a priest. It was difficult for my parents to let me go, but they were thankful to have me back safe. I needed to learn the scriptures and the more God's light shone in my heart, the more earnestly I prayed for those in Ireland. And I longed for them to come to know Christ's love and mercy. Years passed, and while God has continued to bless me, God has never let me forget the days of my captivity. For by them I found him, even in the midst of my darkness. Lord, use me for your glory in whatever way you want, in the place I am needed most. I wonder, why have the gods abandoned us? Why do they not accept our sacrifices? And here you are, 20 years later, a bishop caring for so many people. 
God has certainly made up for all the suffering you had as a slave in Ireland. You have so much to be thankful for. I do. Which is why I am surprised that God is asking me to go back. What? God wants me to go back. He is asking me to return to the land of my captivity. I arise today through God's strength to pilot me, God's might to uphold me, God's wisdom to guide me, God's eye to look before me, God's ear to hear me, God's word to speak for me. God's hand to guard me. God's shield to protect me. God's host to save me from snares of devils. From temptation of vices. From everyone who shall wish me ill. Afar and near. He was caught in the woods. Probably came here to spy out our land. Or in answer to your prayers. Who are you? I am Patrick. The slave. You escaped! Because my God told me to in a dream. And it is because he has spoken to me in a dream that I have returned of my own free will. I saw a man calling out to me. Patrick! Patrick! Come back, holy boy. For we have need of you. God has brought me back in answer to that prayer, to bring his light to you and your people. And that you will do in the fires of our sacrifice. No! Bad. What do you think you're doing? What should have been done years ago. Cut bad. What? How many sacrifices will it take to satisfy the gods? Huh? How dare you, Sassanen? The gods have abandoned us. Look around you. Do our gods walk with us in our misery, as Patrick's god walks with him? Perhaps his god is... Perhaps he is a true god. What? Uh, you want to know if this Christian god is a true god? Do you? Then let him walk the test of fire! If his god is a true god, he will not be burned. And if he is not, he will become the sacrifice he was meant to be years ago. I will walk into the fire. But you shall walk with me. 
What? Why not, Catbat? Isn't this what you hoped for? If you're spared, you've proven your point. If not, is it not better to be with the gods? As you have so often said. But uh, I... Uh, I... Go! But I... Walk! No, I... I... I don't need to prove myself. I... I... I'm on fire! My robe! Oh, put it out! Put it out! I don't want to die! I, I don't want to! That's what I thought. I, for one, am tired of our insatiable gods that only demand more and more blood. Teach us, Patrick! Teach us of God's way! Teach us of the true God. What are you? What are you doing? You, you can't abandon the gods. Hear me, people of Ireland, for God has sent me back to you to show you His way. He is not a god who asks for these sacrifices. For he took our sins and sacrificed himself for our salvation. He does not ask for your body to be burned, but for your heart, that he might fill it with his love, his abundance, and his life. Chieftain Sessanum's entire family were converted and eventually baptized. The chieftain's son begged Patrick to let him follow as a disciple. Noting the young man's devotion, Patrick consented and changed his name to Benignus. The two spread the message of Christianity throughout Ireland. Patrick always went directly to the head of each clan to preach knowing that if the chieftain converted, he would have free reign to teach his people. Slowly, the Irish landscape changed as churches were established throughout the country. Soon, the old ways were almost done away with as the Irish people, touched by Patrick's example, embraced the gospel. That he returned to the place of his captivity of his own free will to teach them was a living example of Christ coming into the world to bring us to God. Eventually receiving the Pope's blessing, Patrick laboured in Ireland the rest of his life. Upon his death, Benignus took over the massive work of shepherding the growing Irish followers of Christ.